Welcome back, survivors. I'm the survival this, and we return to Jurassic Park Revolution, where we are on episode 9 of the series. I just wanted to go in and turn fog on, just in case, because it'll probably be this Friday. I had a very, very immersive experience in Fallen Kings that made me realize that I probably shouldn't turn the fog off, because if it's used, it can be used incredibly well. But anyway, into the hunt menu. Okay, I didn't actually get any requests from last week's episode quite yet about what we should go after as our selective hunt. But, I did get a little exploration tip for something to do on Tyrannus that we'll go through. And this week, what will we do? Uh, just do. I wouldn't mind trying to see what the grizzly is like. Yeah, maybe the double ammo. Okay, should we try going for something like the Kamarasaurus? Yeah, maybe we'll go for some super big game hunting. We'll go to Tyrannus for the Kamarasaurus using the sniper rifle. And looks like it'll be the eye we want to aim for on this one. So we'll keep that in mind. Everything looks pretty good, but let's head in and hop into this new hunt, shall we? Okay. <clears throat> no apologies. We're all loaded in here now. So we'll just take a quick little scan around, see if there are any of the big things around us. The sniper rifle is... Oh, number seven. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind and just kind of keep looking around. Now, we also have a little bit of an exploration goal this episode as well. Oh, going the wrong way. Is the white little rectangle on the map is supposedly something that's going to be very interesting. Go in and look about to see what's there. So we'll make that our destination of sorts for this video. And I don't know what I'll be doing with Jurassic Park Revolution. I... See, this is where it's kind of defied my expectations a little bit. I thought it would have been one of our more popular series, because it's a mix of both carnivores and Jurassic Park. But it's actually kind of the... It's gotten good views, but it hasn't had a lot of interaction with people on comments of what they'd like to see or feedback, like I've seen in things like Mandibles or... Well, Far North is still pretty early on, but... Or no, no, Far North did have, I'm thinking of Paul and Kings is what we're starting into, but yeah, it's just kind of weird that it's a little weaker as a outcome than I thought it would be. I guess maybe because there's, maybe because there's such a difference in the styles. Like the models and everything are less carnivores wise, or it could even just be something as simple as I don't put carnivores in the video title at all, so it gets glanced over a bit more. We'll just kind of go along, see how the series progresses. I want to at least do one of every animal on the roster, or a video featuring one of an... Well, God, I'm tripping over my own words here. I want to at least showcase every animal on the roster in a video. So we'll probably be with the series for a few weeks to come, and then we'll have to figure out what we're going to do next with things. I might want to keep the carnivores three times a week, or I may even switch over Jurassic World Evolution for the Wednesday, just to kind of make it fit a little more like that. But again, I'll have to see what feedback and responses kind of come back in from the video. Or the videos. The channel, it's sort of in... It's kind of hit another one of those walls in a way. Like, when we were building up the first 100 subscribers, we kind of hit these walls around... Ooh, there we go. Pretty far off. But we'll just kind of crouch and sneak our way closer if we can. So that's our first Kamarasaurus, 10.89 tons. We'll see if we can get lucky and close enough to be able to get a good shot on it. But every so often as I was climbing up to that 100 subscriber to start with, we almost hit like these little mini walls that we just wouldn't really get any subscribers until all of a sudden there'd be like a leap of sorts over them. I think we kind of hit that with the 120 to 130 range for subs right now. So whenever I hit those, I always kind of get stopped into the moment of thinking, is there something I should try doing differently? Is there something I should increase what I do, decrease what I'm doing, switch, get new series, etc.? It's sort of that 
you kind of feel like success stops coming to you for a bit, and you're not really sure the best approach you should take with it. Okay, we're getting pretty close up, which is nice, but... I think we'll go for a little closer yet. Oh. Oh, wait, it's coming for us, I think. It seems to be. Okay, this is the first sauropod I've had that actually is out for blood. Um, okay, we can kind of outrun it for a while. But yeah, I'm not sure how to approach this. It honestly feels like we're going to have to kite it for a while and then hopefully get the shots off for its mortal zone up there. Oh, I hear its footsteps right behind us. I just... Oh, Lord. Why are sauropods aggressive even before you shoot them? Okay, let's restart. Okay, well, good news is we are closer to the little spot. Bad news, though, is... I really feel like that's a little bit of a strange programming choice. I could imagine if you get a single shot off, it would get aggressive to aggressive to you, but starting off like that is... I don't know. Well, so I don't know how many take- or how many shots it would take to that mortal zone to take it down. We've gotten a few shots off for sure, but I think that was only two or three. Again, it kind of makes the experience feel more shooter than hunting game at times, but... Oh, oh no, that's not what we want. That's what we need. Yeah, so we don't want to get within 500, because that seemed to be sort of the trigger range it had. I can't see the head right now, either. This is definitely going to be... I'm thinking that was just random ambience, but I've never heard it quite like that before. Yeah, you do not want to flinch and run off, do ya? Oh, and of course you stick into... Okay, let's try to use the trees. They may be able to help us a bit. Yeah, sounds like we got some distance... Oh, why'd you make the mortal zone the eye? That's so dumb. I mean, it makes sense. It'd be the closest shot to the brain. It's just that... Oh, there we go. God, you are titans to take down. You definitely live up to being sauropods, though. Holy crap. 
Although, I mean, up close you're pretty cute. I gotta admit, you're a nice looking model and texture. Okay, we at least got one of them down, so now, because we are pretty close to the dot, I believe this is the dot, or the area they were talking about on the map, we'll go explore a little bit. There's supposedly something here, although I thought... Or is this just the helipad? Yeah, all this seems... To, oh, maybe... There is a staircase or something. Okay, I never noticed that before. It, wow, it blends in so well to the ter to the terrain. So where is the stairs exactly? Because it looks like there is an underground or something here. Oh, right here. Man, the textures just blend so much, I never even realized that. Well, hello. This is quite the find. I can see why I was recommended to come down here. Viable embryos handled with extreme care. I don't know if you'd creep them up quite like that if that was the case, but still. Uh, Biosyn. Quite a bit of machinery. A Carcarodontosaurus. This is, I guess, sort of the mascot for Jurassic Park Revolution, because he's the one that graces the main screen. And we, oh, we got a juvenile Allosaurus. Are you? Well, it looks like you may be alive. Hey there, little guy. That's pretty neat, and, oh. I mean, it never came up past the first movie, but I think... And I haven't read the novel, but I know he's... The character that was played here was supposed to have a fairly... Oh, even the Barbasol canister. Had a fairly large role to play in the Jurassic Park franchise of Crichton's book, or the novel series. A uh, laptop, I guess, uh... Some kind of container most likely to incubate or grow an embryo. All kinds of neat little stuff here. I never... I wonder how many times I passed this completely by without actually going down and figuring out that this was here. Like, the textures blend in so well, I had no idea that it was here. Like, if we go for a little walk just behind the helicopter tail here... Oh, well, the blade kind of came in and out of existence. Like, you can... Vi you barely even see there's something there. But I'm very glad that I was recommended to take a little look here more. Okay, here, I think it's just us or Ambien stepping around, but just in case it's not, we'll end here and get what points we got back from that Kamara source. I think we were at like 598 or something. Okay, so we're back in the hunt menu, and ooh, we actually have the option to go after Sorez. And I think I am going to do that with the same hunt, because Sorez, it has been the first island that's felt more hunter-esque, or hunting style than anything else. Test ground, observatory, bio-reserve, dinosaur park. What are the others? Experimental, wildlife refuge, bio-reserve, and nature reserve. Yeah, so we'll go to Sorez next. It's kind of the larger one. But we'll take it in, see, and try going after our source. So let's go into this hunt. Oh crap, we're loaded up and we have already got problems. Ah, I hate how aggressive things are, I gotta admit it. It takes away the hunting experience from it, but we'll restart. Okay, we're all loaded in. I gotta admit, even if it is carnivores as a series, or the engine, it still feels like a lot of things are far too aggressive for what you would really expect to have, just experience-wise. Like, I really don't think the sauropods would get aggressive unless you actually were to injure one. I can't see them being so bloodthirsty like the Kentrosaurs, which are another one. It does make me wish there was a little way you could almost program it where 
they're more likely to flee on detection, but if you were to actually shoot and get a hit off, they would turn and try to rip you apart. I feel like that would be a little bit more better for the programming, just the feel of it, but... The carnivores, I think, are all pretty well implemented. But Soros is definitely one of the reserves, or one of the maps that I'm very, very... Well, there was something over here. I just don't know what it was exactly. I thought it might have been a Kamarasaurus that was popping up on what we were detecting. But Soros is easily one of the best maps I've seen across any carnivores. It feels alive. It feels... How do I want to put it? Fallen Kings, the first map, feels too dense with vegetation. Um, I wouldn't say unnaturally dense, but... Oh, crap. It, okay. It didn't see us, thankfully. No, oh, or... Okay, maybe it hurt us, but it ran away. Yeah, it seems to be it. It's kind of fled off to the edge of what we can see. So, we'll just kind of be cautious. Oh, the damn wind, though. We'll keep this ready, because we're probably going to definitely need it. Soros here feels like the best map that gives you that true hunting experience. That carnivores, I think, really can excel at once you actually get into that aspect of it. Now, there are some things here and there about how the game does kind of lean more action and shooter pace once something is actually trying to take you down. But, for the build-up up to there, I have to admit that Carnivores and all of its mods so far have done exceptionally well at giving that more hunt style of game. Now, let's just kind of get our way up and see if we can figure out where that Kamarasaurus went off to. I didn't think it got too far away. Although the wind could have sent it off. Oh, there. Oh. Okay, there are two. Well, this one isn't really disturbed by us yet, so we'll just kind of sneak in as we can. Oh, but the pair of them makes me anxious because we've barely managed to get the one taken down before they've kind of been right on us. Well, they are kind of doing circles, so... Which one do we want to try for? They're 29 and 27, so these are actually going to be pretty big compared to what we've seen so far. Okay, no, maybe we'll just kind of wait, see if they'll calm down a bit, because we're not moving. I don't want to try shooting them quite yet, because of... Just, I want to try to get a better shot, so maybe we'll... Hmm. This is tricky. It's sort of like, how do you poke the hornet's nest without being swarmed? I think if we're far enough this way... Yeah, there we go. They've started to calm down, or, well, were. Okay, we'll just watch them for a little while. I think they're sort of figuring themselves out. Just want to do a quick look around. Okay, there we go. They've calmed down enough now. I wonder if I should just aim for more body shots. My thinking is... Yeah, 
if we aim for the eye and miss a lot, that's a lot of wasted ammo, but... Oh my god, how tanky are these things? Okay, you know what? There's one, and we'll leave the other one to do his little circles. Just because we do not want to get close, and we have a successful one. So we'll head back with that. Okay, and even with all of that, everything we unloaded, it only gave us 22 points. So... It shows you I'm very, very glad that I did my change in the point costs, because otherwise we would not make any progress. Well we, well, we sort of have the acro unlocked, but we don't really have the weaponry to be able to take it on. So what we'll probably do is... Uh, we may even try going back to somewhere, or go to somewhere we haven't been yet, because we still haven't seen any of these last four maps, too. Grizzly. I'll leave it to you guys to see what you might recommend for next week's episode. Again, I'm just trying to figure out if there's anything I should be trying to do a bit different for getting the series to be a little bit more up there with our other carnivores. I may start changing the titles of the further videos just to kind of do that carnivores in brackets, just so that way maybe it'll help bring the crew a little bit over more, but so far I think it's been a pretty enjoyable experience on Jurassic Park Revolution, and I'll see what you guys have also been thinking about Jurassic World Evolution. Those names are so similar, I know it's going to probably cause some confusion, but see how well the feedback is and what we can do to help the channel kind of grow and show off some pretty good mods. Until I see you all in the next episode, those survivors, thank you very much for joining me, and please remember to take care and stay alive.